we're going to talk about two-dimensional image transforms. First, um, I'm going to review least squares fitting and then uh, address the topic of finding an image transform using least squares, basically using uh, point correspondences. Then look at the transform caused by a rotating camera. Then figure out how to apply a transform to an input image to get an output image. And finally, look at the example application of generating an orthophoto. So let's take the case of doing uh, fitting data to a line using least squares. So we have some measurement data, uh, basically pairs of x, y coordinates. And we want to fit a model to that, which is a line. Uh, it's an expression of the form y equals mx plus b. So we want to find the parameters m and b that minimize the uh, objective function or residual of the square errors. So we take the uh, measured y values and the x values and we predict what y, y value would get. We take the difference and we sum the squares. So an example might be these three points in an xy plane and we want to fit a straight line to them. So linearly squares in general the input data can be vectors, so these x and y's are not scalars, they can be vectors, and the function can be any linear combination of the input data. So we put the um, expression for the, um, the model in the form ax equal b, where the parameters to be fit are in the vector x, and all our knowns are in the matrix a or the vector b. So in the example of the line, our unknowns are the m and b values. We put that into this vector x. And the matrix A is um, these measured values of x1, x2, x3. And the b vector is this y1, y2, y3. So for the line case, um, the A matrix is this, and the B vector is this. So those are our known measurement values. To solve a linear least squares problem, we want to minimize this error AX minus B uh, squared. So ideally, that would be 0 if there was no noise. We expand that, and using matrix multiplication, we get this expression for E. So to find the minimum, we take the derivative with respect to x and set equal to 0. And we get this equation here, um, which is called the normal equations for least squares. So we can solve these, this equation for x, uh, basically taking the inverse of this matrix A transpose A, which is square. And we get x equals A transpose A inverse times a transpose times b. So this uh, quantity here is called the pseudo inverse and um, we can solve that using MATLAB using this function p i n v a or a shorthand would be this a backslash b. So in our line case if we solve the normal equations um, this is what a transpose a looks out, comes out to be, and this is what the function, um, the vector x would come out to be. So the best fit line is y equals m, which is 1.5, uh, plus b, which is minus 0.33. So the best fit line would be something like this. So slope of 1.5, intercept of minus 0.33. OK, let's look at how to apply least squares to finding an image transform. So we have two images. Um, we want to find a transformation between them to map one onto the other. So if we have a set of point correspondences between the two images, we can estimate the parameters of the transform. As an example, let's take this image, these two images of this book. So it's translated and rotated from image A to image B and we want to find the rotation and translation of that book. So using uh, just manual methods, we would find corresponding points between the two images. In this case, I took the corners of the book. 
So the four corners of the book um, have these pixel coordinates x, y. Each column here is a uh, is a particular point. So this point is the upper left corner of the book in image A. This point is the upper left corner of the Im of the book in image B, and so forth. So to find that transform, we look at the form of a 2D rigid transform. So it's the uh, two-dimensional rotation, cosine, minus sine, sine, cosine, plus the translation Tx, Ty. Or writing that out, we get um, this set of equations for x and y. Um, finding a point in image B as a function of the point, this corresponding point in image A. So we collect all the unknowns into a vector x, which is the cosine, the sine, and the translation in x and translation in y. We form the matrix A here, which it looks like this. Every point uh, correspondence yields two rows of this matrix. And then the vector B is the, uh, the values of the points in image B. Uh, note that I did I treated uh, cosine and sine as independent variables here. They're really not independent. They're both functions of theta. But um, by writing it this way, I have a linear least squares problem. If I had used theta, um, I would not get a linear problem. So in MATLAB, we can solve this problem using this uh, set of uh, commands. Here's the corresponding points. Here's where we form the matrix A. So if there's n points, I have two rows for each point. And here's where we form the matrix B. Here we use a uh, Mat MATLAB shorthand called reshape, which simply takes the matrix PB and reshapes it into a something long number of rows by one column wide. And here's where we solve um, for x. So, um, and then I, I extracted from x the values that I'm interested in, which is theta, tx, and ty. Okay, let's look at the case of a rotating camera. So imagine that you're on a um, mountaintop or something and you're taking a set of images by spinning around and you want to stitch those together into a continuous panorama. So let's look at how that's done. So if I have a point in the world, it projects onto a camera using the uh, equations. Um, so this is the XYZ point in camera coordinates. This matrix is the extrinsic camera matrix, which simply strips off this one. And then the K is the intrinsic matrix, which contains the focal length and image center. So that gives us a homogeneous point in two dimensions. I'll call it x1 wiggle. I can um, take the inverse of this to get the 3D point um, as equal to k inverse times the, the homogeneous 2D point. OK, now let's take a, ro a rotated camera. We've rotated camera from uh, pose C1 to pose C2. Now we look at how this point projects onto C2. So the transformation matrix to go from C1 to C2 is this 4x4 four four matrix here. This is the 3x3 three three rotation matrix. The translation now is just 0, I'm assuming. So multiplying that through, we just get that the point in camera 2 coordinates is the 3x3 three three rotation matrix times the point in camera 1 coordinates. Or Projecting that point onto image 2 is just multiplying by that intrinsic matrix again. Substituting for the point coordinates in camera 2, I get um, the rotation times the point coordinates in camera 1. And I know that the point coordinates in camera 1 is just k inverse times x1 wiggle. So what I've done is I've related a, uh, the image position of a point in image 2 to the image position of the point in image 1 through this um, k, r, k inverse. So this k, r, k inverse is a 3x3 three three matrix, and it's a projective transform, or homography, from image 1 to image 2. 
So let's take an example. Um, say we start with an image and we want to create another image as if it were taken with the same camera but just rotated, say by 30 degrees. So let's say I, s I assume that the rotation is about the camera's y-axis. So I'm going to get um, this rotation matrix. And let's say this image um, had this intrinsic camera parameter matrix. Here I'm assuming that the focal length is 128 and the image center is 128, 128, which is right in the middle of the image. So the, um, the projective transform, the homography, would be equal to k times the rotation matrix times k inverse. So let me go ahead and run this in MATLAB. Um, I'll grab this code. Okay, so I've run that code and I've found that this 3x3 matrix is my homography or uh, projective transform. Okay, um, now let's say I want to generate uh, the other image, image 2, using that homography. So one way to do it would be this way. We would take the um, homography that we found. Um, if I apply that to a point in camera 1, I get the corresponding point coordinates in camera 2. So I'm going from input to output that way. The problem with that is we're not guaranteed to fill all the output points in image 2. Oh, excuse me. Um, if I scan through image 1 and generate the corresponding points in image 2. So instead, we'll go the other way. We'll find the inverse homography to figure out for a, for a point in image 2, what's the corresponding point in image 1. So that way, we can scan through image 2, visit every possible pixel, and then given a P2 in image 2, we figure out where that came from in image 1, and we, we use that intensity value to store at that point in image 2. So that makes sure that we don't miss assigning any pixels in the output image. So um, I'm just going to use the nearest neighbor so if P1 falls on a non-integer position, we'll just use the closest point in image 1. But a better way would be to interpolate among the nearest neighbors. Okay, so in MATLAB, um, let me go ahead and grab this code. Essentially, we're going to, um, to have two for loops to scan through image 2. At each point, we uh, calculate the the corresponding point in image 1, of course we divide through by the third coordinate and then we um, we make sure that that point in image 1 is inside the image and if it is we just assign that point. So let's see here. Okay so I've just run that and uh, created my image I2 And that is my output image here.